Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I wanted to show you guys how to optimize and backtest a strategy that involves a few indicators. So the indicators that I'll be using in this backtest are the MACD and the RSI, as well as a momentum indicator. So in this tutorial, I'm just gonna require these three packages. And I'll start off with using a benchmark, which is the S&P 500 index. And the reason I chose the S&P 500 was that when calculating momentum, I not only wanted to make sure that the stock was trending upwards, but also the index, so kind of a reinforcement of momentum. And the ticker that I'll be backtesting is Apple. So I'll go ahead and run these two. And I believe Apple's data, we'll take a look at, we'll start it off at 1980. So I'm gonna run these lines and then we'll see when Apple actually starts to get data. So we start to get data for Apple late 1980. So I'll go ahead and change this to 1981 and rerun this. All right, so this is the function to backtest and I have a whole bunch of parameters. And essentially what this does is I'm gonna pass in my benchmark, the stock data, and then these parameters are for the indicators or for the momentum. So I'll start off by calculating the returns of the benchmark and the stock. So since I'm optimizing, I'm looking for the best parameters essentially, and I'll calculate momentum for two periods. So when I pass in momentum one and momentum two, essentially these are the look back periods. So say the momentum one was three and momentum two was nine. I'm trying to make sure that the shorter lag momentum is higher than a longer term momentum. This will kind of reinforce that the benchmark is trending upwards. The same thing with the stock. So here I'm passing momo three and momo four. Essentially these are the look back periods and then end fast and slow and N sig are all for the MACD strategy, which I'm calculating for the stock. And N RSI is the look back or the RSI. And I'm also passing in this RSI L, which is an RSI lag, which I'm lagging the RSI by a certain number of days in this case. And this will help me see if the RSI is trending upward or downward. I'm not using the typical bands of 20 and 80 to see if the stock is overbought or oversold, but you can tweak this however you prefer. So here in the signal generated is where we actually generate our signals. So if our momentum for our benchmark is higher than a longer term momentum, it means that the benchmark is trending upward. Same thing for the stock. And for the MACD, I'm just making sure that the MACD is higher than the signal. And for the RSI, as I mentioned here, I'm making sure that the RSI is moving upward. So when all these conditions agree, I'll generate a signal, which will be one for longing the stock. Otherwise it'll be NA. So here I'm just locating where the signal is equal to one because we do have a signal of when to buy, but not when to close. So one of our parameters, I believe is the last parameter, my condition to close is I'm gonna hold a certain number of days. And then after those days have passed, I'm gonna end up closing the position. So that's why I need to locate where the signal is at. And then I'm gonna close after a certain number of days. So here I'm just filling in the signals and I'm gonna go ahead and lag the signal so that we don't close that same bar. It'll always be the next bar. And here just some error checking. So if we don't get any signals, then it'll skip this block. But if we do have signals, then I'll go ahead and calculate the returns of three things. First, it'll be the buy and hold. So I wanted to see how the strategy performs compared to just buying and holding the stock and also the benchmark. So I'll go ahead and combine the returns of the strategy, the benchmark returns, and then just the regular buy and hold of the stock. So like I said, if it doesn't generate any signals, then all the returns will be zero. And then finally, just return all. So I'll go ahead and minimize this function. And this will be the function to optimize. So I'll go ahead and pass in the strategy to backtest. And one of the things that often occurs when we try to optimize using indicators is that we tend to overfit. So be very cautious when running this. And what I have done is I'm just going to pass in all the data up to 2010, and then my add a sample will be beginning 2011 to present. And here I'm just passing in the parameters that we're trying to optimize. So if I don't get any errors, then I'll go ahead and extract the returns of the benchmark, the stock, and the strategy returns. And this line here, I'm just trying to figure out the excess return of the strategy compared to the benchmark and the regular buy and hold. So the higher the excess return will be, the better. And therefore, I'm just trying to optimize the excess return of this strategy.
And also as a side note, you may want to break this up into chunks. And what I mean is maybe you want to back test a few years and then look at the add a sample and then the next couple of years and then add a sample. I think that would be a better optimization so that you don't run into overfitting problems down the road. But for this example, I'm just trying to show you how this works. I'll go ahead and minimize this. I also constructed this function, which is essentially just rounding everything to zero decimal places so that we get whole numbers. Since we're using lags in our momentum, we can't have floating point numbers. Everything has to be rounded to whole numbers, essentially. And then we need to set our lower and upper limits. So the lower limits, you need to have the same number of numbers, which you are inserting for the parameters here. And you can manually set these yourself. So if you don't want a parameter to go over a certain number, you can manually set those. But I'll go ahead and just make these unrestricted so everything will be between 1 and 50. And then I'm just going to optimize this running DE Optim. So I'll pass in the lower and upper limits. I'll set this iteration max to 2000. And I'll also pass in my FN map function which will round everything to whole numbers. Um, you may want to increase this, but for this example, since I don't want to make this too long of a video, I'll just go ahead and set this to 1000. So I'll go ahead and run this block. And then I'll go ahead and run this line with the DE Optim. And if you take a look at the console, we will begin to see iterations. And each of these numbers represents the parameter that we're passing in. So the first value is the momentum for the benchmark, and this will be the lag for the second, and so on for all the parameters. So I'll go ahead and pause this video until this stops running, and then we'll go through the rest of the code. All right, guys, so now that it's done running, I'm going to save the results into this variable called OP. I'm going to apply those parameters to the full data set by running this line here. And then I'm going to plot the results. So if we take a look at the chart, so by looking at the chart, we see that our strategy, which is the black line, outperforms both the regular buy and hold of the stock, which is the red line, and also our benchmark returns. And it looks like the drawdowns are far less than the actual stock, which is good. But what I want to focus on are the out of sample results. So we'll chart that next. So here are the out of sample results. It looks like it did not beat the buy and hold, but it did beat the S&P 500 in this case. So when running this, what you really want to focus on are the out of sample results. And if you're satisfied with this sort of strategy where you don't necessarily beat the buy and hold, but you do beat the benchmark, then this strategy may work. But what I would recommend is that you break up your data set into smaller chunks and back test, say, a few years. So maybe 2010 to 2015 and then you would also change this to whatever you put in here and see if your out of sample results hold and you also want to increase this iteration max so that you are confident with your optimization so maybe around 5,000 iterations i'd say would be okay but just know that this process may take a while and that's pretty much it guys so I hope this video was useful. I'll go ahead and upload this in GitHub and I'll post the link down below. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thanks for watching.